Welcome to our presentation. I am Hervé Kovalek from Lund University. And I'm Alison Stowell from Lancaster University. We are going to present you a paper which is about the critiques which have been addressed to the circular economy. This paper was even co-authored by Nils Johansson, who could not join today. The circular economy has in a few years really emerged as a key principle of industrial and environmental policies. We're not here to define it, but just as a reminder, the circular economy is designed to be a regenerative system in which resource input and waste emission energy leakage are minimized by slowing, closing, and narrowing material and energy loops. Thanks to long lasting design, maintenance, repair, reuse, remanufacturing, refurbishing, and recycling. We're using here the definition by Gasdorfer and colleagues. And basically the idea is that once you get the raw material into the economy, you get them circulated back from use to input as many times as possible. The circular economy has in a few years received a lot of advocates, starting with the people's Republic in China in the early 2000s, the European Union in 2018 acknowledged the circular economy as a key principle of its industrial and environmental policy. The circular economy has even been endorsed by the World Economic Forum, the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, and one of its most important promoters is the MacArthur Foundation. But there is a lot of companies which are sort of acknowledge the circular economy as a key principle of their strategy. For example, Accenture, Apple, H&M, IKEA, and other companies. Not only companies, but even region and cities are now basically turning circular. The thing is that along with all the praises for the circular economy, the circular economy has also attracted many objections, many critics. And our aim has been to gather those critics which are scattered around across a large amount of different disciplines into one single place. And we are going to present you the core of these critics. So the first set of um, objections uh, that we found was the challenge around defining the circular economy and how complex this is. Now, the concept of the circular economy, as Hervé alluded to, is sprawled across different fields from ecological economics, management theory, geography, the natural sciences. And with this heterogeneity, comes different sources of inspiration. So you have things like the performance economy um, that's really thinking about cradle to cradle thinking. Um, you have biomimicry that's looking at how we can create new models or systems that uh, reflect the natural environment to resolve human challenges through to, you know, sort of ideas around cleaner production. Now, all of these, because they have different inspirations, have different starting points and have slightly different goals, which really brings this complexity around trying to define circularity. There's two sort of within the um, sort of criticisms is that um, it almost is like an umbrella term where you have all these different strategies brought together under one roof from recycling systems, repairing, replacing products, services to developing apps for the sharing economy. So it starts to become, and this is what the criticisms indicate, easier to say what the circular economy is not than rather, rather than saying what it is. So this complexity of definitions means that it becomes really hard to measure the impact. Um, and, you know, depending on how it's defined, depending on what's included, depends on what potentially could get measured. So there's a real sort of confusion around sort of how we define and how we measure these ideas. So even though these issues are crucial, you know, if a circular economy is to become a reality, then we need to sort of readdress or re-embrace some of the neglected knowledge or established knowledge that the critiques indicate. You know, they argue that the circular economy tends to ignore the vast amount of materials and products that people have already accumulated. We have materials in our homes, we have materials in offices and buildings. 
And um, the challenge here, so the um, sort of objective, um, the objectives or proponents um, indicate, is that you know if we focus on material flows and not stocks, there is a tension here, or you know sort of a concern about recreating unintended consequences. So, for example, you know we could be saving materials on one side, um, but we could be creating negative effects on another because of these elements. Um, um, being over, o, overlooked. So many circular economy claims also say that we disregard the laws of physics. You know, there are limits to material properties and, you know, the laws of physics also tell us, you know, we can't get rid of waste, things, things disperse and go somewhere. And there's also concerns, you know, about the, you know, not embracing the true complexity of waste management. Um, you know, do we have the right recycling technologies? Um, can all materials be recycled? Um, there is volatility in, in, in the recycling markets in terms of um, prices, and there are new waste streams appearing all the time. Now, a third area that sort of comes up in, in this sort of neglecting of established knowledge is about consumption. You know, Consumption, it seems to be reduced to the question of choosing between linear and circular products, if you like. Um, you know, the focus is on consumers' purchase habits, yet within the adv advocacy for the circular economy, consumers are expected to just accept the changes that designers, engineers and policymakers are um, suggesting. So, you know, re-embracing neglected knowledge is um, key to actually sort of moving forward with the circular economy agenda according to these particular sets of criticisms. So another criticism within the literature comes around sort of unclear implementation at scale. You know, there's, there is no clear direction in terms of how to implement locally, regionally, nationally, you know, Europe, a European level or global, globally. There's also challenges around sort of timescales do we implement this over a few days or is it going to take decades? And within this area too, the, you know, sort of the critiques point towards the challenges at organizational scales. You know, some companies only develop circular economy as part of these operations. There's challenges, you know, around sort of scaling up projects. Um, there's also challenges around sort of le legacy infrastructures, how to retrain people, the costs associated with this. So it becomes very challenging as to whether we're looking at small um, sort of circular activities or how do we actually get them to align with sort of the global value chains. Now, there's also another area is around sort of the unclear environmental and social contributions. Now, contrary to what the advocates say, for example, there appears to be poor knowledge about the, how the circular economy will affect resource use and growth. You know, will the circular economy lead to more sustainable growth or simply just more growth? It becomes very difficult also to measure environmental impacts, especially over the longer term and short term and geographical scales. And some actually argue it only eliminates the negative environmental impacts of the economy. We're uh, um, labeled the linear economy by the circular economy advocates. Although the advocates of the circular economy claim to contribute to social sustainable future for all, a lot of the uh, material um, seems to actually just focus on the physical materials rather than the social dimensions. So it becomes unclear how we're going to create this equity for all within the social domain. And this brings us into yet a problem with the circular economy, which is that it has an ideological agenda, which is not obvious though. It's a very enticing concept. It's a very strong promise that, that is that everybody will benefit from implementation, for example, in terms of material welfare. But at the same time, it is a notion that depoliticize industrial and environmental policy in the sense that it's putting the responsibility of those policy in the hands of the market and businesses and away from the democratic decision processes. 
The circular economy is yet a step in industrial policy and environmental policy, which is putting companies at the center of those policies. And by doing so, it's in a way emphasizing synergies and win-win possibilities. It has a very win-win vocabulary behind it. But it's sort of, sort of putting aside all the necessary compromises, all the obvious problems and all the limitation in a very over-enthusiastic rhetoric. So what can we learn then from the critiques of the circular economy? Now, the criticisms from experts and researchers does call into question the very notion of circularity. You know, there are numerous inconsistencies, hidden assumptions and unclear consequences that need to be worked through. You know, and what we think um, needs or what we summarize from, from this, this paper is the need to keep questioning. You know, how do we know that a circular solution is good for the environment, for example? Who does benefit and who does not from these solutions? Will it phase out the linear economy? You know, this extract, produce, consume and discard to something that is, you know, sort of truly circular. So each of the five areas of criticisms that we've pointed out points at an issue in need of research, policy and managerial attention. And as academics, we'd conclude with a plea, you know, a plea for coherence and transdisciplinarity um, to the circular economy agenda. So our paper concludes then, based upon the criticisms that we pulled together, that a pathway towards circularity would be a circular economy that's modest, not a panacea, but an actual solution to actual problems. It's concrete in the sense of having a clear, being clear about the kind of circularity it sets up and the goal conflicts that it entails. It would be inclusive in that it takes energy, people and waste on a global scale into consideration and is transparent in the sense of being accountable for its achievements and shortcomings, not the least when it comes to economic, social and environmental change. So on behalf of Hervé and myself, we'd like to thank you for your attention. And on our last slide, we've included the references to the paper where we've pulled together all these criticisms into one place. Um, the paper is open access, so freely available to download by all, and it's in the Journal of Industrial Ecology.